Carol is the chairman of Jaeger, chairman of Alder, chairman of the British Fashion Council, entrepreneur once described as the mother of fashion, bouncing back, up and down, not in recessionary times, but in downturn times. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that as well. So please welcome Harold Tillman. I should add, I'm also wearing a Jaeger suit tonight, and I strongly recommend to everybody in the audience, and, and so would my son, that uh, you should go out, if you're a guy, and go get yourself a Jaeger suit. Okay. Suit was compulsory. It was. <laughs> Harold, tell me, you know, uh, as a, an entrepreneur, what attracted you to the, the fashion business? You know, you could have gone into so many different areas. What was it that caught you about fashion? Well, um, when I was first attracted to fashion, I wasn't an entrepreneur that sort of came <laughs> with many years of experience. Um, needless to say, my family, my family background, um, were involved in textiles. Um, my late father was a manufacturer. Uh, he served his apprenticeship in, at a, a very well-known manufacturing business. In those days, it was called Montague Burton. Obviously, today it's Burton. Uh, Burton is a retailer. In those days, it was mainly manufacturing, supplying its own uh, retail shops, making men's jackets, trousers, suits. Um, he served his apprenticeship. He came to London, started a small workshop with two people, making tailored garments. Um, I grew up, well, in fact, I was, I was a baby, um, in, in, in and around this workshop, and there had to have been something um, that sort of got into my bloodstream that gave me the um, inspiration um, to always want to be involved in some form of uh, clothing and fashion. How old were you when you first picked up a, set, a thread? <laughs> a little thread. Well, I, I, in fact, I mean, to, actually, to, to tell you, nobody here would even know what bastings are, but um, in the days before um, some of the elegant machinery that makes clothing today, um, prior to the garment being pressed, they were always held together with white basting cottons um, and uh, for some extra pocket money. Um, I was given what was called a bodkin, which is a little white plastic, um, almost like a pen, and you pull out the bastings. Um, that was extra pocket money. So that's, I was probably about seven or eight years of age. <laughs> <laughs> now, tell us about those early days. I, I read you were one of the pioneers in Carnaby Street, selling mini sweaters and hipsters and goodness knows what else. So what were those early days like, and some of the people and characters you must have got involved with then? Well, I studied for two years at London College of Fashion. Um, superb education um, for anybody wanting to go into uh, textile manufacturing or design um, and left there, went to serve an, as an apprentice um, at a company um, in central London, a men's outfitter. Um, and I was 19 years of age. The clothes that this men's outfitter sold were mm, for people five times my age, um, but it was a successful business. So out of my meagre earnings in those days, I would shop for fashionable clothes as a 19-year-old. Uh, Carnaby Street had just emerged. Um, and it was sort of a painstaking um, time for me to actually work at a company that didn't hold anything um, aspirational for me. And I de decided to um, produce, or design actually, a small collection of clothes um, under my own name, um, begged the owners of the company to allow me to sell them, um, and took them to Carnaby Street, and then there was King's Road. I can remember a day when um, the Beatles opened a shop on Baker Street, it was called Apple Corps, going and getting a first order signed by now Sir Paul McCartney. <laughs> and this is an absolute truth. I mean, there were shops on the King's Road called Granny Takes a Trip. Um, the shop, yes, uh, the, the shop, shop, you remember it? Someone's thumbs yeah. up there. The shop had a, the front of an old Cadillac as, as, its, as its window coming through the, the front of the shop. And I would make specific clothing for them. And this was in the sort of um, mid-60s. Um, and, and that's within a very short period of time. My clothes, my fashion range was outselling the original business. 
So that's how I got into, uh, <laughs> sorry, long story to get into the hips of it. No, but what's interesting there is you, you clearly kind of moved on from being a designer into much, you could have stayed as a designer, just designing clothes. What, 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 what was it that, that made you kind of move uh, beyond I mean, well, I, just being the, the designer, the designer maker? I admitted one thing, and that is a year before I, I went to London College of Fashion, I studied accountancy. Ah. Um, it um, has great, stood me in great stead as, as for uh, my business acumen. Um, but as my business grew, um, I had a desire to, I suppose, become slightly more of an entrepreneur um, and, and, a, and a dream to uh, take the company on the yes. London Stock Exchange. And I was very fortunate enough to be introduced to um, another knight, and that is Sir Paul Smith, right. <laughs> um, uh, who became, um, he took his first um, position with me out of college and became my designer. Um, and from there on, I, was, I had the freedom to sort of develop the business, the businesses through acquisition yeah. and so on. Strictly off the record, was he a good designer? <laughs> <laughs> I think if um, one reads all the press that he attains, I think that answers that. <laughs> yes. and, and other colourful characters on that, that route through, because the 60s and early 70s must have been really quite an amazing time. It was. You know, the fashion itself was such a, it was the world of glam and... Uh, I did have those platform shoes. I suspect you had some. We're a similar generation, yes. Uh, <laughs> and not wearing them now, no. no, no. <laughs> That's not why I'm so tall or short. No. It, it was quite interesting because um, everybody um, at that particular time, in the sort of mid to late 60s, early 70s, um, we were pretty localised. There was not much in the way of exports. People manufacturing, designing manufacturing for the UK market. And the retailer uh, was almost the, the king in the sense that they, there was the Lord John's shop group. Um, there was Mates, which was formerly called Irvine Cellars. Um, there was John Michael. Each one of these businesses, for, for, uh, shall we say, founder was a character. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I, we haven't got enough time this evening to tell you some of the stories. But Can you share one with us that well, won't embarrass somebody? We Lord, John, <laughs> Lord John, whose, whose name I think is Warren Gold, <laughs> a long way from Lord John, had a gold throne built in his shop in Carnaby Street. And anybody that wanted to do business with him, going to sell to him, he sat on the throne. <laughs> I mean, it's absolutely <laughs> bizarre. But 